It's time to look at uh, the stories making the headlines in Nigerian newspapers. And joining me in the studio is Didio Logun, lawyer and social development advocate. It's nice to have you join me in the studio today. Hi. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right. And we also have uh, Shiji Bumi, a uh, DBE Bennett, joining us on Skype. Shiji Bumi, good morning. Good morning, Mike. Yeah, nice uh, to see morning. you, really. <laughs> Okay, let's, uh, let's, let's start the papers now from uh, Blueprint newspaper. Bri uh, Blu Blueprint says, is EFCC Chair Magu on his way out? It's a big question there. Probe shows nobody above the law, a presidency source is saying this. And the rest, the outcome of power play at highest level. The Serap is saying this. Anti-corruption, war political, as Mogalu is uh, saying this. Okay, from the blueprint, let's go to Daily Times newspaper. Sani Mohammed taped to head EFCC as Magu's houses are searched. That's the Daily Times there. Okay, from there, let's go to News Direct. A News Direct is saying something else. A $2.8 billion AKK uh, uh, project to end gas flaring in the Niger Delta. That's the Ajokuta uh, Kaduna Kano project, and stakeholders are saying this. And sound vision of President Buhari, oil serve chairman, is saying this. And it's to end desertification. Honorable Makinde is uh, saying that. Okay, from there, let's go to Daily Trust. Daily Trust newspaper Buhari shops for Magu's replacement, suspended EFCC chair risks prosecution, and nobody above scrutiny. That's the presidency is uh, saying this. And security operatives search Magu's houses. And uh, we're watching unfolding events. Sagi is saying that, okay. That's uh, on the Daily Trust. Now, Leadership newspaper is next now. Leadership says uh, top police officers lobby to take over from Magu. And as presidency suspends EFCC acting chairman, it says his probe shows nobody is above the law. Okay. From uh, there, let's go to National Economy, which is the last one we're looking at now. And uh, from COVID-19, Africa Development Bank projects economic rebound for Nigeria, others in 2021. Okay, that's uh, some glimpse there ahead, certainly. All right, that's the national economy. Really interesting. All right, now, all the stories today, most of them are talking about the recent developments in the last few days, the... Uh, uh, arrest on one hand or the invitation of the ESCC chairman to the presidency to face some panel. But let's bring you this report. Now, Mr. Magu was uh, appointed as acting chairman of the EFCC in the, in the first year of President Muhammad Buhari's administration to replace his former colleague, Ibrahim, Ibrahim Lamode. Now, with the more than a few years in office, he has survived a number of attempts to remove him. Uh, this report chronicles the developments leading to the ongoing probe. Let's see that before we come into the analysis. The 58-year-old senior police officer was appointed to head the anti-graft agency on the 9th of November 2015. In July 2016, the president requested the confirmation of Mr. Magu's appointment by the Senate. Six months after, on the 15th of December, the Senate rejected the nomination and turned down the confirmation. The ground was a certain security report by the DSS, another agency under the same authority of the President. In March 2017, the Senate again refused to confirm Mr. Mago's appointment and the reason is still the security report by the DSS, freshly presented a day before the sitting. Section 2, Subsection 3 of the EFCC Act 2014 provides that the President alone has the power to appoint who sits as the Chairman of the Commission. Then Section 11 of the Interpretation Act, Cap 123 of the Laws of the Federation of Nigeria allows the President to appoint and reappoint an individual as it is considered expedient as the appointing authority. Having survived every attempt to remove him and seemingly enjoying the support of the President, Mr. Mago remained in office for four years and eight months in acting capacity. But the last stroke that seems to have broken the camel's back came from another part of the presidency and in fact the supervising authority to the EFCC. The Attorney General and the Minister of Justice Abubakar Malami in June wrote to the president demanding the removal of Mr. Mago from office. He accused him of insubordination 
diversion of recovered loot, accounting discrepancies and other misconducts. Now, whether Mr. Magu survives this again or not, there are valid questions demanding urgent answers. Is the President satisfied about Mr. Magu's capacity and with it his performance as head of the Commission? Is it strategic for agencies and arms of the same Presidency to come at each other's neck from time to time? How does this term in the country's anti-corruption driver present the government's claim of being serious with wiping away the menace from the country? Uzonna Ononye, TVC News, Lagos. All right, you've seen the background to what, ha how, how, how things have built, built up until now. Uh, you've seen all of that, and uh, certainly Nigerians have been following these developments, and questions have been asked here and there. Now, let me bring uh, Gide in here. Let's start with you. Uh, from the days of uh, the beginning of uh, Magu as chairman has been, you know, tumbling, you know, here and there. It hasn't been the smooth uh, uh, tenure of his office all the while for more, for more than four years, four years and eight months precisely. Now, what do you make of the first instance, the, the, the uh, Eighth Assembly rejected co his confirmation and the president decided to keep him out there? Is it confirming what the Senate uh, was looking at at that time based on the DSS report against Margo? Okay, if we fast track a bit, there was a time a consolidated case came up before a justice. And she said that the president holds the knife and the yam concerning Magu. So if the president actually wanted Magu out, he would have gone in the direction of the Eighth National Assembly when he was not confirmed. So say, okay, now you have to step aside. Let me present another candidate. But because the president wanted him in office, he's been retained. And here we are now. And at, at that time, there was an indicting report from the DSS, an arm of the executive also. This time around, a memo also came out of the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation, who is empowered by Section 174 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended. And here we are now, the man himself, Magu, in acting capacity as the chairman of EFCC, is being queried. And the big question is that, is he on his way out? And the first thing to realize is that when you look at the government structure, there are obligations. If you consider Section 15, Subsection 5 of the Nigerian Constitution 99 as amended, it says that the state shall abolish corruption and abuse of office. Mm -hmm. But having said that, if you look at Section 36, Subsection 5, we have what is called the uh, presumption of innocence. So mm -hmm. at this point in time that they are grilling him, it, it, it's, it's just like trying to investigate mm -hmm. him. He is just an accused for now. If he is found guilty, that is when, and you have to prove that case beyond all this neighbor doubt. Yeah. But when you come to the drama aspect of it, mm -hmm. this is how the former Chief Justice of uh, the Supreme Court of Nigeria was shown the way out of office. So for those who claim it's a power game. I, I may be afraid for Magu that with this level That's, of that, engagement... That drama is, is what is drawing the attention of a lot of Nigerians. That drama. Because the point there is, if, if you're in office and you, they feel, okay, your time has come to an end or there are allegations, you know, there are very honorable ways of... You know, there should be stipulated ways of how to suspend anyone. And all, but the drama around it is what is making Nigerians. But let me bring uh, uh, Shiji Bumi in here. Shiji Bumi, since the days of Nuhu Rebadu as the first chairman of the EFCC uh, and followed by uh, 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 Farida Waziri and Lamodi and all of that, nobody has really left office. No EFCC chairman has left office in, in a very peaceful way where either your tenure ends or something. It has always been drama. What do you make of this... Uh, uh, the, uh, what do you make of this trend that doesn't have a standard? Thank you, Mike. And um, I, I, I just want to appreciate you for giving us like um, uh, a background to the story and for my, for my um, brother in the studio for giving us a perspective um, in, in the aspect of law. 
uh, we have said it all. It has always been like that. And why is it like that? That's the Nigerian factor in terms of interest. Interest have always beclouded be our reasoning. And I'm not here to, you know, um, stand in or to justify Magu. I believe that the office he is representing and the seat he is on requires the highest um, level of integrity. So if Magu is adjudged or seen or confirmed to be corrupt, I will also support him to be shoved aside. But what I find very interesting is the drama behind it, is the drama in it. And as you can see, when an accuser is also the judge, it is not likely for you to get a fair judgment. Immediately, he was uh, put on, or, or he was accused and put on administrative trial. His um, likely options for success uh, was already in the in the pipeline. They've already mentioned names of three people that are likely to 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 uh, succeed him. That means you have already um, you, you it's like you have already uh, concluded on the fact that he is not going to survive this. Take the issue of new with, with Badu, interest, power play. Waziri, Lamode, and here is Magu. Why do we keep doing this to people that um, we, we as, that, that are seemingly um, effective in their offices? Why? Steve Oronzai, the other time, came up with a report on how to merge um, uh, ministries together, on how to reform our civil service. He was accused of corruption. He spent so many years or months in, in court. And at the end of the day, he was discharged and acquitted. But, the, you know, everybody had already run with the story that he is a corrupt man or he was a corrupt man. So these are the things that gives me, you know, sometimes you want to lose hope for this country. You want to lose hope on things that, you know, are not supposed to be. So for me, I think Magu is on his way out. For them to have come this far, no matter what happens, even if he's a judge fair or if a judge innocent, at the end of the day, they've already given names and there is already tussle for his for his seat. So they've given names and options for for his successor. All right. So that's what I. Right. Oh, okay. Now, uh, GD, the point okay. there is, at the point Magu was commended for so many prosecutions, so many recoveries, and the the, the, the giving teeth to the fight against corruption and all of that. Now. The Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the, of the Federation has come up with some reports against the same man who was commended for, you know, fighting against corruption. Now, in the mix of all of this, how is this going to affect the fight against corruption going forward? You know, many have not been able to build a solid confidence in the integrity of fighting corruption in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And these are some of the elements, because if eventually Magu is shown the way out, then you have to reverse back to the position of the Eighth National Assembly and from place from some quarters. And right now that this is an internal query, it's a different ball game. But his office is under the supervision of the Atom General of the Federation. But like I have always said, where there is a will, there is a way. And maybe this we extend it, as extend really to the service chiefs. Because I told you now what Justice uh, Joba Ojuku mentioned, that the yam and the knife, uh, they are with the president. So if the president wants the service chiefs also changed, it's possible. So you can see the drama now. It means that there is definitely a move now to act. And if we engage this in all aspects of our national life, maybe we drive some changes. And uh, to anchor this, I think whoever steps into office, should link up with the day you will step out of office. I just mentioned it to you. The, ch uh, the former chief justice of the, the nation mm -hmm. was doing well in office, and suddenly a drama came up on his uh, declaration of assets. And before we knew it, it was so fast, the man was out of office, and at the end of the day, he got a soft landing. So mm -hmm. it's either Magu gets a hard landing or a soft landing. 
But with this level of sustained grilling, I suspect he may be on his way out. And we cannot rule out the power play. And when you occupy such offices, you, should you won't expect only step anything. on toes, you mm. even step on shoulders. Yeah. And, but like I said, if we harness this energy uh, to begin to develop the country in actual sense, I think the possibilities will manifest. All right. Um, all right, let's head straight to the papers now, and we begin with the blueprint. Is EFCC Chair Magu on his way out? Probe shows nobody above the law, presidency source. Arrest the outcome of power play at highest level, Serap. Anti-corruption war, political, Mogalu. And then we move to the Daily Times. Sani Mohammed tipped to head EFCC as Magu's houses are searched. On the front page of the News Direct, $2.8 billion AKK project to end gas flaring in Niger Delta stakeholders. Sound vision of President Buhari or serve chairman to end desertification, Honorable Makindi. And then we we'll move to the front page of the Daily Trust, Buhari shops for Magu's replacement. All right, uh, now we'll move to the front page of the leadership uh, newspaper. Now, top police officers lobby to take over from Magu as presidency suspends uh, EFCC acting chairman, says his probe shows nobody is above the law. We'll be looking at that uh, story shortly. And finally, on the front page of the national economy, AFDB projects uh, economic rebound for Nigeria, others in 20. 21. All right, gentlemen, we will be looking at the story on the front page of the leadership newspaper talking about top police officers lobbying to take over from Magu. Uh, but before then, I'll start with you, Jide Olugun. With all of that is happening at this point, so some have said perhaps this is a change in direction in the president's fight against corruption. It's not a change in direction. It's still fighting corruption because if you look at the, there are four pillars of accountability. You talk about responsibility, you talk about trustworthiness, you talk about answerability, and you talk about liability. So if there is anyone who has been appointed to serve in the government and you are called upon to account, it's it, it, it in order. Mm. Even the president himself is accountable to Nigerians. It can be impeached also if it comes to it. But uh, the concern of several Nigerians may be that there had been calls in the past mm -hmm. for accountability to be pursued. But this had been ignored. And like I mentioned earlier, there was a decision of uh, Justice Ojuku when some cases were consolidated against Magu himself. And she, she mentioned it, that the knife and the yam are in the hands of the president. So when you talk about the presidency fighting corruption, it's a constitutional obligation. And we hope that that corruption will be fought in a way that is transparent, that is trustworthy, that is equity-driven, and not just a power. So wh what do you like say this now, since you say uh, it is a fight against corruption, it's transparent and uh, there is some sense or, or some level of equity in the process? If, if Magu is found to not to have remitted all he recovered, if he is found to have uh, committed some of the allegations against him, nobody is above the law, at, even at the global realm. So he should be held answerable. But I also caution that according to uh, the Constitution of Nigeria, we have presumption of innocence. So at this point in time, he is just being accused of having committed some offenses. The, the, there has to be a process of judicial uh, uh, conviction. Mm -hmm. that, that case must be proved beyond all reasonable doubt, and that is a burden that is on the prosecutor. But will he even go for prosecution? I mm. mean, I mentioned earlier how the Chief Justice of Nigeria, former, was removed from office. He started with a drama. Eventually, at a point, he got a soft landing. So if you are fighting corruption, it's not just about recovering properties, recovering stolen money, or pursuing the corrupt. We, you, mu we, you must drive it to the end. So if 
irrespective of the office you have held in the nation, All if right. you are found guilty of any criminal activity, you must go to jail and serve the punishment. That All right, is the let's aspect bring of liability. Uh, Shijibomi in now. Perhaps, uh, do you see uh, Magu uh, facing prosecution at this point with the way? All of uh, that has happened has built up to this point. There, there are reports saying that uh, a replacement for him is being uh, the presidency is shopping for a, replace, a replacement for him already. Uh, I don't think the end, the, 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 the reason for all this is for prosecution. So I don't see him going to prosecution. Um, the forces against Magu have already achieved a good chunk of what um, they want, which is um, to make sure that they get him out of office. So if Magu is almost 80% out of office, my personal opinion. So um, what they want is what is happening now is just to get him out of the office. Like Barrister Olugun said the other time, when it was the chief of um, uh, chief justice of the Federation, the, uh, also what people wanted, the forces that wanted him out, they wanted him out, not for prosecution. Mm. So, and you can see that there is nothing that has come out of, of um, or there is no prosecution that has come out or emanated out of that, the whole process. So at the end of the day, even if Magu is found um, guilty, uh, so, sorry, found innocent, he is not going to get back to his seat. So the, 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 the people contending against him, they already have their plans uh, laid out. They are marshalling every every item on that agenda. They just want him out, and it's like he's on his way out. So, but it's just the fear that I have for the independence, the independence rather of um, the or, of uh, the EFCC and other parastatals of government that are supposed to be independent, like INEC uh, also. So we should have a situation whereby we can take them out and place them on separate pedestals so that they have the report directly to maybe the president or to the judicial council. Right. Like what is up the idea of police now, the amendment to his office, whereby the four years for his appoint appointment will be sacrosanct and will be established. Unless you want to now refer to the poli police service commission as a, a, like a suggestion to get him out of office. So with that, we can build our institutions little by little. But when you still have somebody supervising um, uh, a very important um, parastatal or agency of government like the EFCC, things like this are bound to happen. All right, so, so quickly staying with you uh, on this point now, talking about uh, the presidency shopping for an alternative, uh, what would you expect with regards to that, especially um, if uh, someone is gotten, what are expectations of whoever takes over from him with regards to the EFCC, perhaps repositioning uh, that agency? Yeah, we just need, um, Magu has really tried, and we want the president to get someone that is a thoroughbred professional, um, and that we had a bit of tact to the processes of the EFCC, in, in the sense that we, a, a more, more of investigation, the investigations than media trial. We can see the way um, the FBI has been doing their stuff. We can see how other um, agencies outside our shows operate. So that they, by the time they come for you, it's, it, there is this 0.1% probability that you get out of it because the case will have been watertight. So mm. these are the things we need. We just need tact. We need more of investigations. We need more of uh, uh, under the radar kind of operations so that people will not even know the mind. But at the core of it is the character of the person, the character. So and we must, the, 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 the president must through the legislature because right. I know if it doesn't spare it, the legislature will not. We, we, we not do that. Most right. the legislature grant him a grant the office a kind of independence. All right, quickly, uh, let's get your own perspective to this expectations. You know, there is a need to fight corruption, and if we look at the results we have gotten since we started the fight against corruption, talking about the country still being the capital of poverty, I believe we still have a lot to do. 
And I'll take us back to the real essence of governance, like we have in Section 14, Subsection 2 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended, that is security and the welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. So if corruption is denying us what we should enjoy as a nation, we must fight it, whoever may be involved, and mm -hmm. to set us on the path of uh, prosperity. And I expect that as the presidency or the government is looking in the direction of EFCC now, we should also look in the direction of security, the service chiefs. Nigerians have been calling that the service chiefs be replaced with the killings and the high level of insecurity in the land. So the president may want to look in that direction, or maybe we pray that some power brokers also will fall apart with those guys there so that my nation can be secured. And again, I look forward to a time when we begin to beam the light at the NNPC and the operations there. And interestingly, my president is the substantive uh, minister, minister because our oil and gas resources have been grossly mismanaged over the year. We have no business being poor as a nation. So if we put all this together, we come to the point when we conclude that the solution for Nigerian problems are within Nigeria. But the will to drive through is what we need. And the will is also there if we want to engage the will. So we wish the government the best in repositioning this country on the path of prosperity. And whatever happens will be recorded in history as being characteristic of this regime. All right. Uh, Jideo Logun, Shijibomi, Adebi Bennett, gentlemen, thank you for your time on TVC Breakfast. God bless Nigeria.